You promised in 2019 in a manifesto that you were going to get rid of what's called Section 21, where landlords can evict tenants for no reason. What they've come out again now and said is they're not going to scrap Section 21. Today, the Renters Reform Bill has passed through Parliament, but it's a very different looking bill to the one first proposed. I wish that Michael Grove was here and I could just tell him how to do his job properly. I, I agree with you though. I don't think you should ever have to go to court. I wouldn't think it was particularly unfair if they said you're not allowed to evict a tenant at all. It was a Section 21, they thought eviction and they didn't need to give me a reason. Screw yeah. you, landlord! We single-handedly, the we've, three of us, we've to solve around. the entire renters' reform nonsense. Hello and welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. My name is Russell Leeds and I'm joined by Samuel and Kelly. And we're going to be discussing an interesting topic. The government has recently passed the new renters reform bill and they've somehow managed to anger both the tenants and the tenant groups like Shelter, but also they've angered landlords as well. I think one of the reasons they've done that is the the jumping back and forth. I've heard you obviously talk about this as well, Samuel. What, what are your thoughts on, on Michael Gove and how he's sort of getting rid of Section 21 and then not getting rid of it, back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's the fastest way to annoy somebody, to say something and then change your mind. Um, I remember when I got on a plane one time and they said, Wi-Fi is going to be on the plane. And everyone was like, oh, great. And then, oh, actually, no, it's not. Now everyone's mad. So, yeah, it, it, it is the way to irritate everybody. But why is Shelter saying? That's what I'm interested in. Well, Shelter have come out and said that actually this new renters, this new version, because obviously it's had lots of versions over the time, this new version of the Renters Reform Bill is actually worse, in their opinion... For the, the tenants. For the tenants. What? ...than the current system. Mm. Now, obviously, you're a tenant, yeah. Kelly. What, what a working class tenant as well. A working class tenant. Yeah, we got, we got, <laughs> we said we've got two people on the show. We've got the capitalist landlord and the working class I tenant. I am working class as well. He okay. was. If you are working class, um, can you become not work, or is it is it who you are, or is it how much money you earn and what you do? I think it's who you are. I think it's who you are. So would you describe both of yourselves as working class? I would say so. I am definitely. What? No, I am. I definitely one hundred percent am. I'm, I'm. I would. I would say. What's the one that's slightly lower than working class? <laughs> Prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, incarcerated. Yeah, definitely incarcerated. <laughs> All right, so what are your, have you got thought, thoughts on this? Do you think... What are the points? It's Let, let's yeah, talk about the points. points. Oh, and then we can give our opinions yeah. then. So one of the biggest points is there's two ways you can currently evict a tenant. Mm -hmm. Right, you've got section 21, yep. which is a no-fault eviction. Yep. And you've got section 8, which is where the tenants broke the agreement. Mm, and you have to is. take them to court to kick them out. Yep. Now, what they're saying is no-fault eviction is not fair because it's your home, right? Okay. And you're living there, and if you haven't done But there's many reasons, though, even without Section 21, why you can still evict a tenant. For yeah. example, if you want to move back into the house, that class is under a Section 8, doesn't it? So I I'm not worried about Section 21 at all, personally. And I think that if, as a tenant myself, not anymore, but I was a tenant for many, many, many years, it's horrible when you're in a, a property. Yeah. You're a good payer. You, it's your home, you've got kids, that you've, you've found schools locally. Yeah. To just have a landlord just go, actually, Don't, you're out just yeah. because. I, I'm I'm not against Section 21's being scrapped as long as there is still a way to... I, I, and they're also tightening up with tenants. They're making it... If, if the tenants are being antisocial, um, yeah. they're making it easier to get rid of tenants in some way. So I'm not... A lot of landlords are losing their mind over Section 21 being scrapped. But personally, as long as there's a fair way to get to out for a good reason. reason. That's oh, the issue. So we're, the reason. so we're like, you know, three reasonable people. Yes. Uh, all from a working class landlords, but also capitalists, right? Yes. So we're pretty fair. If we were sitting on the... Everyone thinks they're fair though, don't they? I don't think most people are fair because you, you're always going to be biased to your... You can, you can understand the other person's side, but you're going to be biased to your own. You have to be. You can't put somebody else's needs above yours. But as, as, would you not say as a capitalist, as a business person, that's what you have to do to be successful. You have to put your customers, you have to think from, from your customer's perspective. I think more so in business, but in property, in property. But property is a business. It is a business. But yes, because you want your tenants to be happy. But I, I couldn't, if they've scrapped that and now I have no way to get them out except for if they're not paying their rent. What if I do want to move back in? What if my situation's changed? Are there more good, um, good landlords or good tenants? Or I more think, bad landlords or bad tenants? I think people are people. And when I used to work in a estate agent, I've had landlords that we have a portfolio for them and then they're a tenant in somebody else's property. And they were really shitty tenants, 
but then wanted their attendance to be good. So I think there's no, mm. I think pe people are people. People will do what they want to do. But I, th I think that a lot of the people that are, you know, the tenants that don't pay rent and that they, they, they think that the government should pay everything. <laughs> they're the people that are the most stingy cutthroat people on the planet. 100%. Yeah. 100%. They're the people that will go out with the group of friends and they'll be like, oh, I forgot my card. Yeah. They're like, just not well, they're, good people. They're or they're if they had a tenant, as you said, interestingly, yeah. if they had a tenant, they'll be horrible Awful. landlords. But then... It, it, it's all, you know, it's all too, it, it's all one way. It is. I'll so, so you don't think that we're fair, reasonable people? You think that? No. 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 What? Not us? Not, he, not, not us three. Three. No, here's, really. Here's the thing no. though, right? This is why I think we are. Speak for yourself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was me. See, you said you can only look at it from your own point of view. I have been both a landlord and a tenant. Mm -hmm. So, and so have you. Yeah. Right? So we surely we can see it from both sides. In fact, most of my adult life, I've been a tenant. You can see it from both sides, but you're less, you're now a landlord. You've got multiple properties. If you now, the only way you can get them out is if they don't pay rent. What if anything can happen? Those tables can turn. What if you now need to move back into one of your houses and you can't? You can, you can do it with a section eight. As long as you can prove that you need to, to move, back, move in. back in. I thought yeah. that was only a section 21. I no. thought rent was only for, I thought an eight was only for rent, breach of rent. No, there's there's actually uh, seventeen reasons oh, okay. as to what I, 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 most people. It's not common knowledge. Yeah, I mean antisocial behaviour. Yes. there's there's loads. There's absolutely loads of reasons why you can evict a tenant on Section Eight, but one of them isn't. And but the thing about Section Eight the, is, I was going to say there's a problem though with Section Eight. You've got to go to court. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's cost. See, but that's a cost. Well, mm. not only is it a cost, it's also really time consuming. Yeah, and you've got to wait if, to see if the courts have got. What about what, also when you take when you take them to court with a Section Eight? You have to, they have to be in arrears of two months. That's right? the bit that I was, yeah. But here's the problem. When you're taking a tenant to court and they're two months in arrears, what they'll do is just, just before pay. the court date, they'll just pay a little bit. Yeah. So, th so th they're there's one, a, one month in arrears. But then there's yeah. also, there's also a loophole in the system from every which way. You've got landlords that just say, I'm moving back in yeah, and pretend, and but they're not. And they're just going to relet it. So, so really the whole system is flawed. I wish that Michael Grove was here and I could just tell him how to do his job properly. What would you tell him? Well, for a start, it, it, I, I'd say that it needs to be fair. And I think oh, that right oh, now... Oh, he's, he's, he's told Michael Go <laughs> that you need to be fair. Oh, I'd tell him, uh, uh, make it fair, make Michael. It fair. <laughs> he thinks it's fair already. Well, no, uh, that, that from a start, though, that, 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 that whole court process... I think is 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 a matter, and the fact the courts are so backlogged. Yeah, that it, we it, do not need more court cases yeah. right now. So, no. to, so to make it so that the only way to get rid of a tenant is through the courts is completely moronic. Well, well, this is why. Basically, what they've come out again now and said is they're not going to scrap Section Twenty One until the courts can cope with the demand. That's never. Which is I, I, that's it, never. It, it is going to be never. I, I agree with you, though. I don't think you should ever have to go to court. No. No. I think there should be rules. If the tenant breaks the rules... What about if you're a, com if you're a commercial tenant and you don't pay? It's so fast and bang, you yeah. get them out. And I think it should be the same with residential tenants, but there should just be a longer grace period. Yeah. But you shouldn't that have to... Go you, sh sense. you should be able to just say, look, you're behind this much. You need to go. Therefore, we can get a bailiff. I think that the no fault... Uh, in favour of the tenants now, I think the no fault... Time, it's two months, isn't it? Two months is really short. That is a joke. Yeah, it's short. That is a joke. If, yeah. you, if you've done nothing Imagine wrong. that. You've got a pregnant wife. Yeah. And and, and, and you, you've just settled and you've... Also, how can you even move your... Like, we've just moved a lot of our family to the area. If people are renting, it's so, it's so unstable. It is. It is. And they, landlords are jerks. A lot of landlords. Some of them are jerks. They are. Well, they do things like... Um, what about you when you p paved your garden? Yeah. What so, so I, I was I was renting uh, a place because yeah. I've been a, t a tenant loads, and I said to the guy, he came round. He, I knew the landlord a little bit. I said, "Can I put a there's a dirt patch by the window?" Yeah. I said, "Can I put a patio down yeah. over the dirt patch?" He was like, "Of course, yeah, do of course you, you can." You're adding value, to better, my adding house. value, etc. <laughs> yeah. So I did it anyway. About a year later, I moved out, and I got a bill through to take off the deposit. To remove the patio. You're having a laugh. And then every week, That's Russell wicked. would look over the fence to see if he'd actually put it back like it was. And had he? Of course not. Patio's oh still there. God. See, those... That's That's, scummy. Tell me about my, about me. that's when, a scumbag. When I was living in Warsaw, many, many, many years ago, um, the fireplace was really old. Do you remember when I was on Argyle Road? Yeah. The fireplace was really old and dated and there was flowery carpets and stuff. And I just 
changed it. I just updated it. I got yeah. rid of the old fire because it didn't work. It was broken and it was an eyesore. I put a nice new modern fire in. I changed the carpet. I put a little, what do you call that, TV partition wall in. Yeah. Made it beautiful, made it mine. Lived there for about two years. Then moved out and then the landlord said, oh, we're going to put it back like it was. You've no, done this. you're not. And took my deposit. You're right? a liar. Now, now I kind of knew that would happen and I just took it on the chin yeah. because I thought, you know what? I knew I was going to live there two, three years. I wanted to do that and whatever. And that right? So I took it on the chin. But you know what really pissed me off last week? Last week? Last week. What? Last week. Yeah. I don't know if you do this, but sometimes I go to my old houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Do you, is this like a normal thought, thing? I thought I was a weirdo. No, I <laughs> well, look. It's, 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 you go to your old houses and you just want to see what's going around. Yeah. I know we do within that postcode specifically, then within quarter of a mile. Just have a little feel, right? I did that and guess what house? Same house, my house. The one that I lived in was there. I clicked on the pictures. Of course it is. He had my carpets. <laughs> he had my fireplace. <laughs> he had my TV wall. And I'm thinking, screw yes. you, landlord. That's a scummy person. That's a, that's a scumbag move. So it he is. charged me because he said he didn't like it. But then fast forward eight years. Eight years. Eight years. He's still got my same carpets, my same nice new fire that I put in there. That's a scumbag move. Yes. That is a scumbag move. That, that that is and that all right. So how There's do we no how reason. do we fix this then? If we're going to fix it, do we need do we need multiple different types of um, eviction notices, or could we have just one? one. I agree. Just one. one where you don't have to go to court. Yep. What? Well, don't, what you wouldn't keep the court one at all. Uh, no. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what I wouldn't do as well because it's confusing. Most yeah, landlords don't have a clue how to evict. Oh my gosh, they I've got don't. this tenant and they're, they're not being good or I need to get rid of them. They don't know how. They need to go and pay lawyers. Do yeah. you know why things are complicated? So that the professionals can charge high cons Absolutely. consultancy fees. That's why. You know how complicated tax is and it just shouldn't be? Yeah. Did you know that clothes are not VAT registered unless they are, if they're child's clothes, right? So if you buy child's clothes, it's yeah. not VAT registered. But adult's clothes are. Oh. Right. Yeah. However, did you know that if a child's piece of clothing has animal fur on it oh. now it's VAT registered unless it's a particular type of animal oh, fur God. why is this so confusing because they want it to be they purpose. want it to be confusing so that they can charge us to figure it out absolutely and it's the same with tenant evictions it's so confusing to evict a tenant that like like you just a moment you're a very educated person very, very smart person and, 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 and section a, you were like, oh, how does it work exactly? I it was only rent. Right, but and lots of people do. And that's you, who's very smart, and being very an estate educated, agent many being years an estate ago. agent. Me, myself, I don't know. I don't know everything. I don't know lots of Come things. On. People, someone recently put a video together where they got loads of videos where they put all the stuff that I've ever said wrong and made it into one video. People have got a lot of time on yeah, that. Yeah, but, but or, or things where I where I wasn't sure. Or, I yeah. think one was I said something like the um the the the, the, the income that you can take as as um, tax free mm -hmm. is. Um, 12,750 and it was like ha ha it's actually 12,570 I'm dyslexic I got my numbers mixed up God. but it's like it's so complex for a reason and complexity is the thief of execution yep. and they want to stop people in my opinion becoming landlords getting on the property ladder and one of the reasons they do that is by making it so Difficult. confusing alright so it needs to be simple one eviction one eviction notice mm. that's it yeah um, is there what are the rules then how can you to make it fair what are your grounds for evicting someone? I think, okay, I'm, the grounds I'm not overly sure on, but I can tell you is that the, it's just a grace period. Two months to move. Let's say you, you've done nothing and it's just a no fault eviction. Two months on paper looks great. But in eight weeks, if you've got a child that's in school, you've got to find something in the area. You've got to find something that's still affordable. You've Six and then, months. It's, yeah. But I agree. Three to six. I think six months. I think six months. If, well. it's, if it's not their fault, that means you just want to rent it to someone else. Because yeah. You, then it's like, okay, give you six months. I think that's fair. I and agree. I think if don't they don't pay- long. No, it's not long because it's no- If anything, it's I'd no say fault. no time. I'd say that oh, I wouldn't think it was particularly unfair if they said you're not allowed to evict a tenant at all if they're paying their rent. But I think that's, that's a little bit much. That's or a bit Or you do a fixed term and then let's say, for example, AST is normally like, what, a year? Yeah, for yeah, example, well, a year. And they, no, these days, they're trying to, these days they're trying to tie you into three years. I, I'd yeah. take that. That was a tenant. Yeah, yeah I, would. <laughs> I would. If I know, yeah, if I, if if I, I know I'm going to say. There. Another, another thing as well that's bad from landlord's part is the fact that they can just hijack rents. Oof. Because I think that, I, I, and I'm against rent control, but I think depending on how it's done, like if you're paying a grand a month and then the landlord turns around when your 12 months finishes and says, now it's two grand. 
It so should be in proportion. The landlord shouldn't be able to jack the rent up higher than how much the rent is actually worth. So, so what would you say the check? proportion, like what's the proportion? Well, it, it, again, it's the same as commercial. It, with commercial property, you have a surveyor come and say, this is this is what, what the rent, this is what the rent is actually valued at. Yeah. Well, that's creating extra complication then. Then, you, then you've got to get a surveyor out every time the contract comes up for renewal. Yeah, but there could be an appeal process. If the landlord jacks it up a lot, there's a bit an, an appeal process. Being saying, Hang on could you not have a, have a fixed percentage that it goes up? No, because well, it, there's no. meant to be. It's meant to. Some of them are meant to go in line with RPI. But my uh, friend's rent went up three hundred and fifty pounds. Let me ask you a question, Kelly. If you had a house that you bought mm -hmm. fifteen years ago, yeah, and the tenants moved in and they were paying five hundred and seventy-five quid, yeah, and then you forgot about the house because they were so awesome as tenants, <laughs> yeah. And then you realise that they were still in there, good tenants, never caused any issues, yeah. always kept the house good, always paid on time. They're still paying five seven five, but the actual rent now is mm. eleven hundred pound. What do you do? Do you I, increase I have, it? How much do you increase it by? I, I you will in, I'll increase it, but not to price them out because they have given me no trouble. Hence, what did you, what you put it up property. to? What did you put it up to? What's what's the market value? Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred, and they're paying five seven five. They've been in there fifteen years. Is this a real case? Yeah, it's a real case. Yeah. And I've got lots of cases. And mine's paid. This. My mortgage hasn't changed, or is it? It's paid up. No happening? mortgage. No I've got, mortgage. I've got one that's a bit like that. Not, okay. not as high a jump. No mortgage, and we're at eleven hundred, seven hundred pound. I put seven fifty. Fair. But I, Fair I, 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 I actually did it in incre increments. I said, listen, really, you should be paying like a grand or yeah. more. We're going to put it up to 600 right now yeah. as for three months. and then But then next year, it's going to be 750. That's fair. But the thing is, that's more than fair, which is why I said yeah, seven. And also, they they are aware. Just did because... you not see the headlines? There's no com there's no landlord that's more compassionate than me in Britain. I did not see that. That was, that was a quote in GB News <laughs> by I, me. I did, <laughs> <laughs> I did self, not see Self-proclaimed. Uh, Self-proclaimed. <laughs> self I did not see that. I think that's, that's more than fair. And they are aware, even though... They might not be happy, but they're they're aware. They know what their friends are paying in rent. Yeah. So if you can know it's eleven hundred, someone says they're seven, not going to move that, are they? If you say seven fifty, they're not going to go I'm, right. I'm leaving to go where to the to go to and pay next somewhere eleven hundred or twelve. Mm. <laughs> but my attitude was they're such good tenants. Yeah. And they've done don't so, disturb them. Yeah. But so still, I just put, I just put it up in, in in line with inflation. Yeah. That's that's fair. As opposed to in line with what the actual market's doing. That's fair. Other landlords would come and well, say. Well, what about this then? What about if the landlord wants to put up the rent, they have to get a surveyor out to prove it. So from the tenant's point of view, yeah. that's the rent. The rent yeah, is the yeah. rent. Yeah, and then you can't argue, can you? But if a surveyor comes out and ups it, then the landlord can, can up the rent. Mm. That's fair. What about when a tenant is paying rent? Hey, what would you do in this situation then, Kelly? You're a landlady. Yeah. The landlord's paying rent. Grand, uh, sorry, the tenant's paying rent grand a month. Yeah. Good tenant, no problems. Then they lose their job. Oof. Okay. And they claim benefits. Okay. Would you accept, the, would you accept that, that, that it's okay if they're on benefits? What, and they're still able to meet the full rent? Yep. Yeah. What about if they're living in a HMO and there's other properties that are professionals? Now this is on... Nuanced! So, yeah, because now they're going to be in the house all day. Yes. Taking Gas, up bills. electricity. Yeah. I, I think you let them, if they moved in when they had a job. But now all the other tenants are going to be upset, going to leave because this was supposed to be a professional house, yeah? And you've got someone that's just claiming benefits sat watching these tenants all day. But, uh, but, but if someone has had a long... If they've been a long-time job having, they've just fallen on hard times, the likelihood of them sitting there day in, day out without trying to look for a job is low. So I, I, would, I, wouldn't, I would keep an eye on a situation. Yeah, that's fair. And, you know, if we're I six months down the line... You said a minute ago that you weren't a fair and reasonable person. You sound very fair <laughs> no, and reasonable I, to me. No, I am. But you only see stuff from your point of view. I can see it from their point of view, but if it starts to get detrimental to me, then you've got. To, that's what I said. I'm going to keep an eye. But I suppose, I suppose that would then be. It's not them not having a job that's detrimental. It's what they're detrimental. Doing. It's what they're. It would be antisocial behaviour. I would have thought that was the issue. Yeah, but it's hardly that antisocial. No, if they're just sitting well, what, in their room. What, what's the issue then? The issue is they're sitting that, in their room. One yeah. bad apple. No, but man. one exactly. So that person could make. So we've got a seven bedroom, seven bedroom HMO, and then six people are pissed off because this one person's there. After but six months, got to go. How would they even know? No, they know. I know. And it might affect the bills. Like, well, it would affect the bills. And then he might be like, oh, actually, everyone else's bill is going to go up £100 yeah. pounds a month because you're the, the eating point and is, drinking all day. It's, it's complicated and it's nuanced and there's no one strict way. But at the moment, it's so complex and it's so difficult for everybody. All right, so, so far, what have we got? We've got, if it's a no-fault eviction, six months. Yep. Yeah, right. I'd say three to six. He's very kind. I think six. As very kind. Been, I yeah, think, yeah. I six is not long. For no reason. I've been kicked Multiple out for no reason. I've had to move in two months. So yeah, it's horrible. No, it, it was it's stressful. It was dire. Because you, you, you look, you, and you're like the things on that I like. No, and, great. And that is what kept happening. And you know what? It's so hard to move house. Yep. 
removal vans. Costly. Yep. You can't be told to leave within two months. You now. can't. And at the moment, it's just not right. Um, I seen a viewing the other day, and it was a corner house. The the queue to view was round the corner. So mm-hmm. you can't. You might even find a house that you like, and you go, and then tomorrow it's gone. Here's the thing, though, right? I actually think that leaving two months notice is detrimental to the landlord. Let me explain. They can re- relay it quickly. I explain why. When I was told I had two months notice, do you know what I thought? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> care about you lot. No. If if I don't find somewhere, I felt no pressure. Yeah, but you've got to stay. Yeah, you've got to say. Like, if I don't find anywhere. Yeah, most people aren't rule breakers like you that only see it from your point of view. But I would do, do that. I also think should be a rule mate, though. Mate, most I would do that. Do do that. That's exactly what tenants... I would do that. I think one of the reasons why tenants are like, tenants' rights, I don't care, yeah. is because things like the two-month rule, so where they just stingy. look at it and go, that's just unreasonable. Yeah. Do you know what another thing I do think, though? Give six months, but I think that the landlord should be allowed to facilitate viewings. That's fine. That's absolutely Because that's fine. another bad thing when the tenants are refusing to let yeah. the landlord do viewing. Yeah. It's unreasonable. It's that like, unreasonable. it's literally going to take yeah. 10 minutes for someone to have a quick look round. Yeah. But you're not going to, you're going to cost me thousands of pounds just because you don't want someone to pop in so the house. So should the yeah. landlord have the right to, to access the property with notice? What do you think? Would, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice? yeah. Oh yeah. 24 hours written notice. 24 hours written notice. So they Email. Can access the property Three days anytime. notice, I think. If it's, hey. a fa- if it's a family home, yeah. Because the house might be a bit messy up. and tidy up and 24 is too short. You might have plans. Three days, no miss. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So that, so that, that, that would get over the viewings or any other issue, inspections, yeah. anything at all, yeah. right? Mm. I, I agree. And, the, and But the landlord, I think, should only be able to come out and do viewings and stuff like that if, you know, there's notice being served. <laughs> yeah. Because otherwise the landlord could be annoying and be around all the time. You need peace, peace quiet, enjoyment. Yeah. What about for inspections? Yeah, that's different. So once every six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think an inspection, or, even 24 hours written notice, is just an inspection. It's not a viewing. Yeah. But we're, we're there or thereabouts, but 20, somewhere yeah. between 24 hours yeah. and three yeah, days. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what are the reasons then they could evict them where they give less notice than the than the six months? See, I think you should be able to give much less notice if the tenant doesn't pay. Yeah, then two yeah, months. Yeah, renter is. Two months. Antisocial. And so I think behavior. after two months, you serve them woof, one month notice. Here's, and if they don't move, bailiffs. Here's bailiff. the thing though, right? This is where it has to go to section. It has to go to court, yeah. right? Because there'll be antisocial behaviour. That's subjective. What you might think is antisocial behaviour, you might think is perfectly acceptable, True. and vice versa. Not paying the rent, there's no, there's no question there. No. You either, you either did or you didn't. Or you didn't. So I don't think not paying the rent should have to go to court or anything. I think not paying the rent just I, who would who would prove it? A state agent, the letting agent. It's just there, black and white. Yeah, it's bank. It's just a bank statement. Yeah. Landlord's back statement. So if you haven't paid the rent, two months notice, yeah. you've got to go. Yeah. yeah. And when you serve, how would how, who would enforce it or whatever? If you like, how would that work? Bailiffs. I think bailiffs. Yeah. So you just show what the bailiffs. What do you think have to be bailiffs? Not just no. If normal. they don't leave. Oh, if they don't leave. A certified bailiff. Oh yeah, then. Yeah. So the landlord would employ a bailiff, yeah. and then that yeah. money would come out of the deposit. Yeah. 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 So yeah. There we go, Michael Grove. We single-handedly, the <laughs> we've, three of us, we've just it solved around. the entire. Renters reform nonsense. Just like 20 that. minutes. I, I, I it's simple though, isn't it? I think we have solved. Do you know what I also think? think so. Tenants wouldn't mind that. The the only thing thing we, they wouldn't. The only they thing wouldn't. we haven't totally solved is other reasons other than not paying, or is there no other reasons? No, I think if they're being antisocial, but most things, I think the antisocial stuff has to be pretty severe to kick them out personally. I think the rules should be a bit different if they're in a HMO, which we maybe won't have time to go into in this video. But if they're in a if they're, if they're in a single House. family home, yeah. um, the antisocial behaviour, I think, has to be pretty severe to kick them out. What about you don't feel Namely, like- criminal activity. Police, yeah. What about yeah, you yeah. don't feel like they're looking after your property? You go in on your inspection, and it's fucking horrible. What'd you do then? No, I think that's a reason for them to go. I do, but who decides? If the, mm. if the damage is... Because what we're trying to avoid is court, isn't it? Yeah, if the damage is more than the deposit, then you can... Then you can go. The if it's, yeah, if it's more than cosmetic... But who, who decides? Well, it's just the damage, isn't it? It's, it's again, it's like a, it's like a, when you get a survey on a property and they can tell you so, how much things. So, so would cost. we have? So rather than a court system, mm-hmm. would we create a new job of property surveyors who maybe go in and do the inspection, assess and they the rent, decide. assess the damage? Yeah, I think it's just the yeah. people that do inventories and stuff. They should take it on. So we hire. We so we so we we go forget the court system and the court system so slow. The court system is horrendous. It can take six months. We're going to create a new system called. Inventory police, in- right, inventory or whatever. In- yeah, yeah. They go in every six months, and then they, not the landlord, no, they, they decide if the tenants broke it and if the tenant is kicking out. When are we setting up this company? Then? Yeah, honestly, company? In- in- and can we call it Inventory Plus? I like that one. Yeah, okay. Inventory Plus. 
Will oh, be the first one. It's like PIMS though, isn't it? When we created property investors mediation service, because there was there was so much. I don't know if you saw saw that. No. Um, there was so much nonsense going on with deal sources, and someone would sell someone a deal. It wouldn't work. Oh. We set up something called property investors mediation service, where we became the inventory police, effectively. Where we said, look, if there's any disputes, come to us. We'll, we'll sort it out. It. And it's been absolutely one hundred percent effective to date. I think that thousands makes sense. of members. No, I think that makes sense. I think prop- inventory plus. Makes utter sense. And do they? What do they get? Like a like a percentage of the rent? No, they just no they, fixed they just, fee. Yeah, fixed fee, fee for going out each time. Yeah, just just like an inventory, just like an EPC check. I'd much rather pay them than pay all the lawyers. One hundred percent. And yeah. they're completely biased. And then there's no, there shouldn't be any delayed time frame because there's there'll be loads. Ours will be the biggest in the first, but there'll be others. Yeah, I, I like that. There we go. Like inventory I we, plus. I think we've solved the housing crisis. Michael Grove, <laughs> get quit. A, get a clue. We don't need you anymore, bro. <laughs> just quit. We see Kelly. Come, come, on, stage. come, and, come and sit here. We'll boss. sort you out. It, the thing is, this is the point, isn't it? This is what's so frustrating. This is why people get so frustrated with politicians and politics mm. and the government because it is simple. It is straightforward. Yeah, it really is. But they make it so complicated with their agendas and their backhanders here and their backhanders there and and, and trying to please this this type of people group. Yep. No, let's just go back to reasonable and fair. I agree. And I'm simple. Here for it. I think, we'll, I think we'll end it on that. Well, so guys, thanks very much for joining Thank us. You. Thanks Thank for you. watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe. And don't forget, we'll see you next week.